Reloaded 400 five mil adrenaline. Clear. Let him go, Liz. It's over. Charging. Come on, I'll keep fighting. Clear. Don't you give up on me. Come on, Bobby. Come on, Liz. It's over. Call the time. Charging. Come on, Bobby. God's green. Liz, I'm sorry. What have you done to my boy? Everything. Everything that's possible. Senator, Mrs. Willis, this young lady will show you to my office. Dr. Chase and I will be right gonna now. He's going to be all right. We're going to be right he's, now. He's, he, okay. he's going to be OK. Oh, Is, isn't he? Clear. Come on, Bobby. Time of death, 11-17. with that man is Lewis, a boy has died. A drug addict whose overdose destroyed his heart. He was never coming out of that coma, Liz. 20 minutes, I would have had him. Hey, hey, you have saved 37 and children. And lost four. And without you, they're all lost, all of them. You gave them their chance, Liz. You, come on, you gave. You gave. Why? Why a heart attack? <laughs> now! You stay away from us. You killed him. You, you. Before the coma, Bobby had years of drug abuse. The damage to his heart. Christ, you're saying it's my fault? I'm saying that I told you all of this before we started. The odds, the risk. You insisted that we take Bobby. What did you do to him? Trust up like a lab rat, electrocuting him with all you your. You knew the procedures. Your wife sat with me for hours, selecting images, sounds that we thought could reach him. <laughs> You murdered him. I swear to God, you're gonna pay. Hey, Woody. Gates, go here. What do you want? Let me get an answer yet, Jacko, or are you going to push this till end of day? You had my answer even before you made me an offer. No, no, I mean the real answer. The one where you admit that if you don't sell, you're going straight to the bottom. I'll tell you what, Gates, go. When you decide to sell your company to me, then I'll listen to your reasonable offer. You know what your problem is, Jacko? Yeah, I'm too polite to assholes. Once a yank, always a yank. Bye-bye now. You might at least talk to him. Yes, right. Uh, how was your one-night stand, dear? Did she do you proper? Can you deduct her drinks and such, being she is your secretary? Right. All out of your system. There is the matter of my grandchildren to consider. Brilliant, Mother. Perhaps I should invite the bitch to family tea. Introduce her as Daddy's nanny. Gosh, wish there was something I could do for you. Where's Daddy? He didn't have to sleep at work again, did he? I bribe him to do that, because I like walking you to school. We have to bring something to class today to explain to everybody. So I've got an idea. Oh, that's dumb. 
take the stick instead. My brother gave me this stick. I'm taking it in class today. That's nice. Can I look at it? No. <laughs> Right there, you can see that Newcastle is looking very good. Plus, we're almost online with the Cambridge-Dublin run, and part of that 60,000 would go to the completion of that. Don't you think, Jack, that it's all just uh, ever so slightly thin? Whatever happened to that buyout offer from Gateskill? Look, Alan, I didn't build this company from scratch to hand it over to Gateskill at 30 pence on the pound. It's not going to happen. She'll have broken bones. No. Come on, son. Leave her. Please. Leave her, son. Jack. Yeah. It's about Frankie. Say hello to your sister. Could she say like that? Some people think so. Do you like my hair? No, I didn't dye it. I could dye it back. Or another colour. You pick it. Blue. Orange. Anything you like. Think about it. Look. It's fine now. Better than you. Dad and I sanded down the scratches. They're really small and and we put on this great varnish. It it's good for the wood then. And it's yours now. I 
want you to have it. I'm really sorry. A few more minutes, darling. We have a nice clean room. May I say something? Strikes me there's two sources of unbearable stress in your son's life. Frankie's condition. Sadly, you can do nothing about. Doesn't today suggest you should begin to address the other? on our blind date. I mentioned Raul is from Lima, Peru. He's very handsome, kind of sexy, may I say. And we're gonna use some stem that you know, cross with some stem that he knows, in a very embarrassing video for my third birthday, believe me, before you guys were born, just to see what happens. What is it? They're okay, they're fine, the kids are okay. We just got some power over them. I'm gonna shut it down. This can't be happening. I mean, how much juice can a second child be using? Come on, Liz, your assistant can take a hundred at the same time. It's gotta be, uh... What? What? It's a coincidence. That's all I got. Liz. Yeah. Hey. Hey. All right, so uh, here's what's going on. Raul's father just called, and he's, uh, he's pulling him tonight. The senator is uh, going to get them. He's going to get them all. And the district attorney's going to send a guy here tomorrow morning. Hey, John Boyd, to see Dr. Chase. Hey, 
Hi, Johnny. I doubt the dude's expecting you to spread it in the stairs. Thanks very much. How would I find Dr. Elizabeth Chase? She usually requires an appointment. Oh, oh wait. It's me. Oh, John Boyd, doctor. Short-handed in the early staff? Short-handed sure everywhere. Can't get caught with our pants down, can we? I mean, we have an important guest coming this morning to judge us. Important? Yeah, some guy from the chief prosecutor's office so major he needs to carry a concealed weapon in a clinic full of unconscious children. Well, after here, I drive to Okotoks to uh, take the statement of a man we believe may have murdered his entire family. The precaution was recommended. Can we talk? Let's stop in the kitchen and make you a coffee. Well, that's all right. I don't need a coffee. Fine. Then you make me one. Uh, did I start on the wrong foot here? What the hell would you know about the worth of what I do? Well, practically nothing. That's why I'm here. Well, let's start with what you have heard. Chronography, electric shock, IV stimulant cocktails, special foot massage. I thought the first rule of law was innocent and proven guilty. Well, I thought the first rule of medicine was first do no harm. Like these kids can't defend themselves. They can't complain about the electrodes. They can't close the eyes you've clamped open. Is there any point in telling you how very much we care for them? Look, my job is protecting these utterly helpless children. Your feelings and good intentions and many confirmed successes are not beside the point. They're just not my first priority. Then what could I possibly say? Anything you like. No. Oh, no, no, no. Why should I let you pretend to be fair? You don't have a child in a coma. Thank God. Because if you did, you'd be begging on your knees. Begging. Not 35 minutes. You know, well, I've read about frogs, fish, frozen in lakes for weeks, and they were able to come out. Different creatures, different metabolisms. It's just not the same. investigator around here. Hey, it's a pretty small town. You know, something you said I can't stop thinking about? Begging on my knees. Look, um, I'm sorry about that. You were telling me why you do this, why you have to. Now, you're these parents' only chance. I mean, how can you turn them away? And here I come, some jerk with a gun with some smug logic, and uh, I'm going to take you away from them? Their last hope? So that part I get. I do. And I get the attitude. And the only thing I haven't figured is, uh, why did you come all the way out here to tell me off? Because I didn't. 
Your priorities are what they should be. And if you give me another chance, I'd like to jump at it. Allison here seems quite keen on the breathing tube test. Even though we haven't felt this... Connect the breathing tube, see if she will uh, breathe unaided. You see, breathing itself does not indicate awareness. Respiration is largely, but not completely, an involuntary action. To breathe unaided requires some minimal conscious or subconscious input. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Well done, everyone. Well done, Frankie. Well, I think that was splendid for a first try. When will you begin to do something? Alison, please believe we are doing everything. You're in our doing heart. nothing. Nothing. You're only keeping her alive. Is that so little? Leaving her alone, Emma? No, no, I wouldn't say little. I would say monstrous. Mr. Haywood! Mrs. Haywood! Dr. Jenkins, call administration, please, Dr. Jenkins. You know, I'm not sure I should be mentioning this without Dr. Stanhope's approval. There is a place in the Americas, in C Canada. The theory being that if we can stimulate our nerves, maybe she'll respond in her brain. Hmm? Start it with a virtual reality mask, beamed videos, familiar images, sights that she will remember. Sometimes strobing lights, sudden noises, Rapid sequences, a very low level. Electric stem across her body. So, having reviewed their highlights for many hundreds of pages of printout, we're now running subliminally rapid bursts of stems from that session to see if we can pick up where Annie and her partner left off. All right, Nate, whenever you're ready. Multiple spikes, Liz. Uh, right subcortex. Oh, that's our Annie, sly and secret. Until hit with stem from Raoul's package at 2.7 volume. Hearts up, 88. We just got a jolt everywhere. The right subcortex is climbing off the chart, Lizzie. Can you hear me, Annie? Lizzie, we got a rocket. I've never seen anything like this one before. All right. It's Lizzie, girl. I need you here. I need you now. Extremities. Left side, Lizzie. On the left side. All right. Here we go, Annie. It's our time. I'm here to catch you. Safe here. That's my Annie. Come on. Reach out. You got me? Just one squeeze. Just one squeeze. One.
Yeah, it's fine, fine. She's all right. Yeah. Um, so what's she like then, this uh, Dr. Chase? Well, I actually didn't talk to Dr. Chase. I spoke to the business guy, his name was Kern. And he just wanted to make sure that we knew the cost factor before we committed. Look, uh, this may not be Frankie's only chance, but it's the only one that we know of, so... If they find us suitable, it's $10,000 a month. Right. It's even worse. The company is bleeding money every day. I can hardly keep the planes in the air. What? I didn't want to bore you with what's been going on, because I feel I've... I've caused you too much grief already. Awesome. Listen to me. Kern says there was this girl that they brought out of a coma. Her name is Susie Corning. And her family's on holiday in Suffolk. It's her last weekend. He thinks so. She'll see us if you'll go. Then to be right back with our Susie as soon as she helps her freshen up. Wouldn't want to meet a charmer like your boy without looking her very best. I was stationed out here in Woodbridge. That's where I met my lady. She was quite the painter, but just watercolors. And uh, Susie is enjoying a holiday? Having a whale of a time. Getting into heaps of trouble. So Dr. Chase is quite the miracle worker then, in your eyes? Once I talked her into taking Susie, there was, well, a lot of brain damage from the accident, and Doc Lizzie won't take the ones she can't help. See, if they knew how conscientious she is, they'd stop writing that garbage. Garbage? To save 20 kids from hell? That ain't news. But everyone that dies... How many? I'll tell you one thing. Those reporters have never lost a child, and then found her again. Speaking of angels... Where you been hiding, Susie girl? Up to no good, I'll bet. Hi. Hello. Hello, Susie. It's nice to meet you. I'm Allison. Yes, so nice of you to take time off your holiday. Well, look who's coming calling. Hey. Sam says you're a painter. Yes, well, there hasn't been much time for it lately. His model. My dad likes to do them together.
thank God. I will love you do for the rest of my life. No, I meant thank God for you. Do you think he's in trouble because, Frank, he's not resolved? You mean dead? I mean dead. Look how beautiful he is. Like his mom. You should get some sleep. Use my room. I'll sit with him for a while. Out of the traffic. I think life as we know it is finally becoming ugly and manageable. Busy day for us. Three chapters, no less of our story. Several notes from your mates who miss you terribly. I know you think he's young for you, but indulge your mother. Will you? Right, let's have some of your friend's letters. Uh, this is from Lydia. Bonjour, mon ami, which of course is hello, my friend. The mot is masculine even though you're a very feminine friend. It's all because my ami would sound awkward. Such a silly way to run a language. Don't you think? I know we've taken a great deal of the clinic's time, Doctor, and I'm sorry for that, but we've called to say that regretfully, we're not going forward. I see. Well, perhaps it's for the best. Uh, we've been having some problems of our own over here. We still haven't figured out how to manage the money. May I ask you a question? Does this have anything to do with Susie Corning? Well, that concerned us. Well, this is such a different case. We told the Cornings that Susie's brain damage is extensive, that even in recovery, her functioning could be severely impaired. Now, Frankie's situation is quite to the contrary. Her brain tissue looks healthy, but it's the connections along the neural pathways that aren't working. If we could make those connections, there's every reason to believe that she could recover. Does that happen? Do they ever really recover? Well, 38 have come back. One last Wednesday, Annie Dean. She called her mother. I heard her say, hi, Mom. Someday Frankie may say it. Never give up on that. 
An accident, you said. You know, sometimes the details of that can help us learn how to reach them. Only Ben, her brother, knows about that. No, ma'am. Frankie knows, too. Would you like to talk to Ben? Sure. I'd love to talk to Ben. And I'll get him. Hey, champ. Come here. You okay? Hmm? Yeah. Lizzie, this is Ben. Frankie's best friend. Hello, Ben. I'm a doctor. I've helped lots of kids come back from where Frankie is. What does that mean? She didn't go anywhere. She's still here. Inside, Ben. Kids like Frankie tell me that sometimes they feel as if they've gone inside. A quiet place where no one can find them. What? You mean like my room? Whenever she has nightmares, or she's afraid of monsters, she comes into my room, crawls into my bed, and then she's safe. Hey, Ben, I bet you know all of her favorite places. No. Some. <laughs> well, you tell Frankie's doctor everything that you do know, because I'm sure it could help. Why can't you be her doctor? Oh, I wish it were that easy, Ben. I really do. It's not fair to him. It's fair to just kill him? To let him go. To not pretend for our own needs that he's still here. Give him the dignity and truth. We all loved him. We love him still. And that's forever. You can stay, Lizzie, don't you? Stay from what? You already killed him! He's here. Wanna sing with me? Remember our song? Hmm? funny guy. The other night he wanted to swim out to you. He thought that we could go to you instead of you. You coming to us. That would be unwise. Most unwise. Even though you've given up on her? That is a shocking misstatement, Mrs. Hayward. And disrespects the time and devotion all of us here are put into Frankie's tree. So then you expect that she's going to recover here? I expect to keep her alive and healthy. You call this healthy? Mrs. Hayward, you've been through a great ordeal, and I can excuse anything you'd say to me. I have no ego in such matters. Then what is it that you have trouble excusing, Doctor? To take the child from our care to an experimental facility in America where children have died in the vain hope of some miracle. Not in the child's best interest, you think? Illegally, it's your decision. 
I'm asking your opinion, doctor. Go on the line. Not in the child's best interest. In my opinion, Mr. Haywood, reckless, bordering on criminal. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Dr. Stanhope, helpful as always. Thank you particularly for your lack of ego in this matter. Yes, well put. I was about to say the same. We'll be in touch. Give us a minute. I'm sorry, John. I'm just really busy right now. Warner doesn't know I'm here. Say it. He's shutting you down tomorrow. But the order says suspension, temporary suspension pending an investigation. Suspension. Does that shut our doors? I don't know yet. Like, he's not taking my calls. I think he knows I'm on the wrong side of this. John, this is not your problem. Yes, it is my problem. Even though I don't know why. And you don't have to go through everything alone. Okay? Are you still there, Mr. Hayward? Do you mind holding a little longer? No, why would I mind holding? It's only been eight minutes. For a man as important as Mr. Gatesgill, I'm prepared to wait nine. Hey, Wood. Gatesgill here. You're calling about partnering on your Glasgow Dublin run. I'm not sure it's for us. Right. Well, sorry for wasting your line holding. Hey, Wood, before you hang up in a snit, I, I, I heard you need a plane. An air ambulance charger is for your daughter, isn't it? Yes, how would you know? Your banker told me. Look, uh, take ours. The aircraft's in Rome, and I've told the Kuwaiti owners that I have to fly to the factory in California for its thousand-hour check, so I can drop your family off on the way. You know what you're risking? Look, nobody will be the wiser. There's no charge, but you have to leave tonight. The timing's too tight to waste. Look, uh, just get your daughter out of the hospital and onto the tarmac, and, uh... Get her well, Jack. Listen to me. You have what? a change of plans. What? I can't come until tomorrow night. What? Why? What happened? I have a meeting. It's for Frankie. It's a good thing, but I need you to trust that. All right, but... Don't be long. We need you. Come here. Listen to me. I can't come until tomorrow. Okay? So, I need you to take care of Mom. And your baby sister. And do whatever it takes. And Gwen. Well, I'd stay away from her or she'll have your balls for breakfast. <laughs> All right? Love you. Go. I'll call you. Thank you. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. John Boyd. Oh, hi. Hey. Um, sorry I was busy earlier. 
I was just, you know, calling for an update. Is there any news? What time is it? Uh, 1.30. You mean you weren't staring at the phone? I'm sleeping by it. It's almost the same thing. Hey, I, um... I told Warner what you did with Annie Dean. I told him it was a miracle. And that he was keeping you from doing it again. Like, this is temporary. You can keep the hospital open. Maintain the kids. Just suspend experimental and unproven procedures. Mm. Just stop treating them. You see? It's not so bad. It's Liz, please. Oh. Well, we're so hopeful, and we're gonna do this. I can feel it. She's coming back to you, all the way back. And is this the man who recruited me? Yeah. Why can't you be her doctor? Hello. Hello. I like the hair. I'm Liz, Frankie. Straight off, we are girlfriends, all right? I'm gonna come get you and bring you home. Promise her? You bet I promise. Dr. Chase? Yeah, hello. Hi. Dad. It's me. Good to hear your voice, Liz. How are you? Question is, how are you? <laughs> Me, eh? Well, you're on the news up here. Lots of places. And I'm worried for you. Have you talked to Mom? Oh, sure. She's moving down to the city, she thinks. But I guess you know that. Mm. Still miss her? I miss you both. I miss Danny, too. Why'd you have to bring that up? Because I think about him every day. They're shutting down your clinic. How can I hear about that and not think about him? Your clinic is about Danny. He's all that it's about. Nobody likes a shrink who can't be subtle. Nobody likes a shrink who makes them see. You're brilliant, Liz. And if you work smart, there's a world of opportunity out there. But to access it, you must pull back now. Why is the one person who will tell you the truth the one person you push away? I'm not pushing tonight, Dad. I want to try something that's never been attempted before, and I'm... I'm a little scared. I need to talk it through. I'm here, darling. Frankie is the only child here right now, and I don't think this injunction ever goes away. So what do we do? Disobey. He's just been here. We have time.
Ricky. I want you to make your dad feel at home. I'll be right back. Those electrodes off a of monitor. There's no treatment going on. Mm-hmm. But there will be. Not only will I treat her, but I promise them I bring her back. You mean like Babe Ruth calling a shot, promising Homer? You look like I feel. Only adorable. First I thought, how can she promise something that she has no way to know that she can deliver? And then I thought, she's psyching herself. Failure is not an option, that's a gift to Frankie. Mm. Even the way she talks to her. Not like we do it. Desperate, hopeful. She does it with confidence, she is being heard. So your mystery meeting, are you going to tell me? No, yes. I sold our company to Gateskill. <laughs> and he offered me a job. Cheeky bastard. And I jumped on it. It's a win-win situation. I learned finally my humility and uh, my family doesn't starve. So, a long day. <laughs> Which room is mine? You sold our company. Now we're going to afford separate rooms. Mm. So I have this theory that some of these children are conscious all the time, just at a deeper level than our instruments can pick up. Like a dog whistle. Exactly. You see, I knew Annie and Raul were spiking whenever we hooked them together. Did make sense. Of course, I tried other combinations of children and nothing happened. So I figured it was a fluke. But then I thought of Ben and Frankie and how attuned they are to each other. And I thought maybe Raul wasn't a fluke. Maybe the right person is the best stem that there is. But I couldn't see any reason for their connection, so I asked Annie to come and see me. Guess what I found out? that they met, talked, even flirted a little. (laughs) So what are you saying? They were sending signals to each other through your hookup? Why not? I mean, we're sending stuff down the same neural pathways and it's absolutely conceivable they can send stuff back. But it didn't work with the other kids. Just Raul. How come? Well, she thought that Raul was Jared. Jared's the boy that dumped her. Now, when I saw a photo of Jared, he didn't look anything like Raul at all. Meaning? meaning that she saw what she wanted to see. Now, if we hypnotize someone and sent them in searching for Frankie... Mm, I'll okay, go. I'll do it. No. What? No, I'll go. I'm not looking for volunteers. It has to be the person that Frankie wants to see. I know. She wants to see me. Absolutely not. Under no circumstances is my... They didn't run across that street to buy a magazine. Hey, son, listen to me. It wasn't your fault. You can't take responsibility. I never got to the school, Dad. Maybe Ben needs to do this. I'm not sure that's a point, Doctor. Well, maybe Frankie needs him to. And maybe those two things together are very much the point. The point is that it's dangerous. I think he's right. And I think he's Frankie's best chance at this. Forgive the repeating. Go where you need to. Do whatever works. Just keep your mind free for the sound it makes calling you home. If you need to signal me, use the stick. Three short. 
three long. Side, Lizzie, on the left side. He's within reach. We wouldn't be signaling us. Let's just hang on to that. Got her. Just, just, just doesn't want to leave yet. Liz. Doctor, wait here. Where are you going? Louis, what's going on? I'm sorry for this abruptness. I'm Chief Prosecutor William Warner, and I need your attention on the following. I hereby serve immediate notice of closure on the Perlman Institute. You have no right to do that. He said notice to be served with immediate and enforceable effect, meaning everyone leaves these premises now. No, please don't. I assume the girl on the first bed there is Miss Frances Hayward? No laws were violated. The equipment is purely for monitoring. But who's the boy? He's her brother, sir. He's undergoing hypnotherapy to deal with the condition of his sister, a treatment that's neither unorthodox or experimental. Would you wake the boy, please? To forcibly awaken him could endanger his health. Now I'm putting you on notice of that risk. With witness there, too. Would you call the family out here, please? I'm Chief Prosecutor William Warner. I'm here to inform you that your daughter has been placed in the protective custody of Cambridge Health Services under the direction of Dr. Trevor Stanhope. Stanhope. That man has no right. That is to absolutely say what ridiculous. To us. This is a court order. 
Sign and seal 30 minutes ago. Once you're back in Cambridge, you'll have all due process for your appeals. We all want to protect your daughter, ma'am. That's why we're here. But your government has the final say in how we do it. That is the law, and we will enforce it. Now, stay in hope not the British government has an authority over my children. I have the authority over my children. If you wish the spectacle of a forcible removal, you will be accommodated. Accommodate me, then. If you wish. Corporal! If you'll allow their grandmother to stay, I'll see to it. And Mr. and Mrs. Hay will come along. It'll be a lockdown. Nobody in or out with our clearance. Guards on the door, guard in the kids' room. All armed, the works. Why didn't you take the boy? I think he's with Frankie. If they get unhooked, I don't know what happens to her. Losing him again, how deep she goes. Out of reach. Ben, I don't think he'll leave without her. If they're unhooked and she disappears, I don't know where he goes or how we find him. You can work everything from there. It can't do everything. It can't do the stims. But it can talk to... See this? That's what connects Ben and Frankie. So you're going to fake a heart attack? All right. Lizzie's spoken to Pam and she'll help. Don't overdo it. It's harder to breathe. Uh, wince occasionally. Play it down. Um, Dr. Fleming will call. That's the name we'll use for Lizzie's dad. Good. Okay. Right. Yes? Hello? Oh, doctor, thank you. Well, it's moving now. Down my arm. Left. Yes, the left one. Oh, is there an intensive care room on this floor? Give me a hand here. Oh. Where is she? On the second floor. She won't let me touch her, Doctor. Okay, I'm Dr. Fleming, darling. Now, you're gonna have to help me help you. Hmm? Get a gurney. Take him, quickly. All right, guys, help me get her up on the bed. Very gently. Okay? Very easy. What the hell do you think you're doing? What do you mean what I think I'm doing? This is my daughter. And that brave young boy right there is my son. Now would you please put your weapon away? My orders are nobody leaves. And you're exiting a side door with children that are in protective custody. Their life depends on them getting immediate medical treatment. Do you understand that? This is the doctor that I trust. This is the doctor that I've chosen as a father. Shouldn't I have that right? It's all right, Jack. 
He was just following protocol, which is why he can lower his piece and you can take the children wherever you need to for their safety. I'm the ranking law enforcement officer on the scene, you. It's my responsibility. So you're off the hook, buddy. Here's that thing you wanted, doctor. We got one last call. We don't have a defibrillator. Cardiac arrests are rare, but as the newspapers have pointed out, they've happened to us. And if there is an episode, then my dad will know what to do. Your dad? Well, I'll be under with the kids. How'd you think we're getting them out? If Frankie could come out with Ben's help, they'd be here. Now we can sit and pray, or I can go in and get them before the police break down the door. you hypnotize me again well i do remember why i stopped everyone has their own barrier between conscious and um as you put it not unlike the barrier between life and death now you're going in to come back hmm? will you promise i'm not leaving those kids in there so what are you worried about or die trying. Come here, let me tell you something. You should shut the hell up. Pam, let Coates. Jack, hand him the stick. Shine a light for me. I'm going with you. No, no, no. You stay here. You stay here. You stay where you can. We got this. We got this. Johnny! Neighbor! Neighbor called about an ambulance in the middle of the night. What's going on? Well, if you had your warrant, you'd know. Should be here about uh, 20 minutes. Next time you decide to torpedo your career, do it in normal business hours. If one person in there is harmed by your actions, you're a person looking at civil and criminal charges. Now, you do not go in through the ice. You need to swear it. Forgive the repeating. 
Go where you need to. Do whatever works. Just keep your mind open and free to the sound of my voice calling you home. Forgive the repeating. Go where you need to. guys because I know the way home. Frankie, I've been in rooms like this before, lots of them, and I know a secret. They're all alike, the things that try to get us. They don't care who they're coming after just as long as it's someone. So I tell you what, you and Ben can walk out of here if someone stays. And I will. When you open that door, if you want to see the street of the accident, with no cars, no people, no noise, and no danger, then that's what you'll see. And then you'll just take each other's hand just walk home. I'd like to see that. Would you? Here's what I think. Open the door. Just a crack. she wanted to see. Maybe the right person is the best stem that there is.
see? It's working already. You're sorry I died. I am too. And I'm sorry I made you feel bad all this time. <laughs> it's not your fault. Funny. I was gonna say that to you. Danny. Don't say it's too late. Because it isn't over. It's never over. You said. and kiss her and stuff. She's not going to break. Oh. 